Yeah, today I'm going to read from volume four of my book, Annotations for the History of the Classical Guitar in Argentina, 1822-2000. to 2000. Interview with Lolita Delfina Almirón, born 1914, died 1997, and her sister Lila, by Richard Rico Stover. Rico, this is a interview with Lolita Almirón in Rosario Santa Fe, Argentina, on January 10th, 1991, and her sister Lila. They both knew Augustine Barrios and his brother Martin. In regard to the dates, they interest me a lot. I know where Barrios was in almost all of the years of his life, but I'm always searching for more details. In what year was the first time Barrios came into your life? Lolita, I almost don't remember. Lolita, when he came to our house, you were already playing guitar well. Then it would be the year... Rico, 1923, 1922 or 23, the year 1922 or 1923. Rico, I imagine that's logical because I know Barrios was in Argentina in 1923, in 1921 and 1928. I don't know if he came later in 1928 here. Lolita, he only came once. He came once, says Rico, in 1923. In what month? Do you remember? Lolita. It was in the winter, summer in the Norma, uh, northern hemisphere. He came in the winter. Lolita. In the winter. It was in the winter. He played a duet with me. How? He played a duet with me. He played a part of a work called Romanza for the Guitar, which Romanza of the Violoncello of his own, Lolita, it was the other one. Rico, Confession? Lolita, yes, yes, si, si. Rico sings the melody to Confession. And he stayed with you for six months? He only paid to sleep in a hotel, but my father never let him eat anywhere else. Barrios liked carne, asada, and empanadas. My mother was a great cook. Rico, did he play concerts in Rosario? Lolita, he played. Rico, did he play several times, more than once? Lolita, three times. Lila, her sister. In the Biblioteca Alvarez uh, library that they recently reconstructed, he played with a group of guitarists. Lolita, an intimate reunion in which they played. My father didn't present just anyone. My father was very proud. If someone came, you had to appreciate him. He was right. Lila, if they weren't of the same school as my father, this boy was Atahualpa Yupanqui, a poet of the guitar. He studied with my father, Rico. I heard that. His name was Hector Lila Chavero, Hector Roberto Chavero, Lolita, Horacio Chavero, Rico, Horacio Chavero, Lila, Horacio Chavero, Rico, yes, yes, yes. Lolita, he lived with his family in Calle General Roca, Buenos Aires province, where his father was the station master of the train station, and from that was a friendship with my father. Lila, studying here, Atwalpi came on a horse, a little ways to receive a lesson every day in a concert that he gave here two months ago in an interval. He spoke quite a bit about my father and Lolita and said, Maestro Almaron never wanted to charge me for lessons. He couldn't teach him to play right-handed because he was left-handed. And the truth is that in his specialty, there isn't anyone who could surpass him. Rico, yes, I know. I have many records of Atahualpa Yupanqui. Lolita, I played them a lot and studied them. He was the greatest there is in folklore because he is a poet of the guitar. He has many beautiful things. He never wanted to change his style. My father never insisted. Lila, my father let him study as he wanted. 
Rico. And that was here in Rosario, Lila. No, in Hunin province of Buenos Aires, he came with his wife and stayed for many months eating in our home, studying with my father. Rico, in what year was that, Lila? That took place in 1926 or 27. Hector comments, uh, this is my co-author, Hector Garcia Martinez. Hector comments that these dates are in error, that it was 1928. Lolita, I had already gone to Europe in 1931. Was that year? No, no, says Lila. Rico, Atualpa still wasn't famous, Lila. Yes, he was not really known, Rico. Yes, but now, at least since the 40s or 50s, Lila. I don't know much about folklore, but he is a poet who has no equal, Lila. Uh, Lolita, he was authentic, pure art, Rico. And your father was born in Argentina, Lila. Yes, he was born in Carmen de Areco, a province of Buenos Aires. Rico, he was Spanish. Lolita, he was a descendant of Spaniards. Rico, the grandson of a Spaniard. Your parents, I mean, your grandparents came from Spain. Lila, no, 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 they were descendants. My mother was born in Argentina. Rico, and your father, when was he born? Lila, the 19th of July. The 19th of July? Lolita, no, the 29th of July. Rico, what year? Lila, 1879. I remember because my mother-in-law was born in the same month in the same year in 1879. Rico. Then he was six years older than Barrios because Barrios was born in 1885. Lila, yes, father was older. Rico, and how did it become that your father dedicated himself to the guitar. Lolita, the guitar was everything to him. Rico, he studied with a maestro. Lolita, no, he studied alone by himself. Lila, alone. Rico, how did he come to read music? Lila, he liked the guitar very much, very much. Then began the war. When he was young, he was given a guitar by a distant relative. Then my grandfather found out that he liked the guitar, and then he broke it. And you know what my father did? He came home and made a guitar at once from a pumpkin shell. This was his desperation until he could convince his father. Then little by little, he began to study. He had lessons with Pratt. My father did. My father studied a lot with Pratt. With Pratt, then later he went to Buenos Aires. Lila, yes, yes. Because Pratt arrived in Buenos Aires in 1905 or 1907, actually the 1st of January, 1908, I believe. So your father was going to Buenos Aires to study the guitar. Lila, my father was married in 1905. Rico, but he never lived in Buenos Aires? Lila, no, he always lived in Hunin. Lolita, where I was born, Rico. So with his studies with Pratt, he was able to perfect his ability. Lolita, he also studied with Segovia and Yabet. Rico, that doesn't surprise me at all. Lolita, Yabet was also a great guitarist. Rico, of course, very great. Lila, do you know Richard? Originally that a while ago, Almost a couple years ago, I had a photocopy from Tokyo where it figured Andre Segovia in first place, in second place, Maria Luisa Nito of Argentina, and in third place is Lolita Almarone in Tokyo. Rico, in Tokyo, an appreciation, right? In the 1930s, the uh, Nipponophone uh, Corporation in Kawasaki, uh, to uh, Japan, published Columbia recordings that were done of Yabet, Saints de la Maza, Lolita Almarone. They were available, I believe, about 1939 as a, a set of discs in a, a folder that would hold all three records. Lolita, I want to go to Japan. There are many guitarists there. Rico, there are many guitarists there. And you know what? 
I'm going to do. I'm going to write an article of this interview we're doing. I'm going to speak. I want you to, I don't want you to speak only of Barrios, but of your life as well. I'm going to write an article about both that will come out in magazines in England and Tokyo. Lila, how beautiful. Lolita, England. They asked me to go there, but a sad situation passed. They wanted me. I went there to be heard and when and then I believed they were gonna pay me well, but they paid me less. It's terrible. That's Randy Osborne speaking. Lila, do you know something, Richard? I'm going to tell you about her, Lolita. All her life she was very kind, kind. In that many concerts were done as benefits and she has taught a group of blind guitarists for almost four years without charging anything. She has done many, many works of charity because in that manner one doesn't make money. One doesn't make money. She doesn't pity the blind. Her emotions, Lolita, I'm not the only case, Lila. She has done many works, many works of charity. So it was, and she didn't do it for money. Richard, she didn't make money. I told her many times, Lolita crying. Don't get emotional, you'll get sick. She could have made a lot of money, and my father, he was also very kind. We're a family like that, a poor musician who found it difficult to take home, take it home. Lila. He had great friends here, the best doctors, I tell you. At a gathering, they would say, Maestro Al Marone has to be with us besides his guitar. He loved with a book called Martin Fierro. Lolita, that is a that was a cultish book. Lila, that had quite a cult. They were crazy about it. It seemed there were, was always an inclusion of a passage from Martin Fierro in a conversation. So many opinions. It was incredible. Rico, it doesn't surprise me that your father and Barrios had a friendship. Lila, an, in, an infinite one. Rico, because, let's see, in Asuncion, the three favorite books of the young Barrios were Martin Fierro, Las Mil y Una Noches, and El Quixote. Las Mil y Una Noches is A Thousand and One Nights. And then the famous El Quixote. Lila, El Quixote, Rico. And also Barrios was generous and kind. He didn't make any money from his music in his life, did he? Lila, she, Lolita, is a portrait of my father. It appears that Lolita is emotional again. Lila says to her, you're gonna grow old if you cry a lot. Rico, let's return to the theme. So Barrios was right here for six months. Lila, six months. Rico, simply just resting. Lila, yes, Rico. Or he went to Buenos Aires once in a while? Lila, yes. Do you know in the home they had a guitar gathering? Three or four or five personalities would get together. Lolita played, Dad played, Augustine played. Sometimes he would play a duo with her. He had a lot of affection with us. I don't know the reason. Rico, because he knew this family was talented, evidently. Lila, my mother was a person who hadn't studied a great amount, but she psychologically, she could tell when someone was worth a lot. Bautista said of Barrios, he could steal the heart of anyone. They loved Augustine, he was very kind, very kind. Lolita, did you spend a lot of time with Barrios? Rico, no, I was born a year after Barrios died. Lila, you're very young. Rico, yes, I was born in 1945. Lila, 45, the year my daughter was born. Rico, therefore I never had the pleasure to know Barrios. Lolita, do you have children? Rico, yes, I have two. They live in California, a daughter and a son. My son plays the guitar. Lila, a son? Rico, yes. Lila, they live in California. Uh-huh, says Rico. Lolita, have you taught him the guitar? Rico, a little, yes. Lolita, her daughter has a brother-in-law that lives on the coast in the northern part. Rico, well, Barrios was here in 23, and one day he left 
and never came back. Lila, no, he never came back again to Argentina. Rico, and when he was here, did he leave any manuscripts? Lolita, he came with his guitar. Lila, he brought his guitar. Rico, so he didn't write anything. Lila, we don't have any manuscripts of Augustine. Rico, that would be very valuable to photograph. Lila, listen to me. In a scrapbook, there is a manuscript written by Barrios. Don't tell me, don't tell me, because I know what is here. Rico, it might be, it would be very valuable to photograph that. Lila, what happened, Richard, is that for many years my sister has lived with me. I've been a widow for almost 12 years. Rico, did he leave any photos of himself? Lila, Richard, no, but here's one of my husband. Lolita, do you know the work Oracion Portodos? Rico, yes, yes, I listened to your recording. Lolita, it was my best. It is in A minor. I studied composition and harmony. I studied with Teodoro uh, Fuchs, Teodoro Fuchs. As well, I studied with maestro Carlos Vega, the musicologist. Rico, he was famous. I've read books by him about folklore and Argentine music. Lila, what are you writing about? Is what you were doing of Debussy? Lila speaking to Rico. You know, the guitar is exceedingly, there is very little music of the guitar. Rico, yes. Lila, she has done many transcriptions. Lolita, I arranged the well-tempered clavier by Bach in E minor and the death of the swan by Debussy. Lila, she has done many beautiful transcriptions. Lolita Tchaikovsky. Rico, do you know what? You should show me those things because I believe we can put something together to make an album because you never released anything. I don't know anything of Lolita Almarone. Lila, I'll tell you something. Our father made some publications of folk music and he loved folk music. Recordy edited them. But three years ago, more or less, they wrote the amount of money they wanted. I don't know how they could publish. They charged an enormous amount, Richard. Rico, how could they charge money? Lila, to publicize the artist. Rico, did they charge you? Lila, you have to pay a lot. Rico, that's ridiculous. Lila, however, that's how ridiculous this country is. Rico, the artist doesn't have to pay anything. Lila's son, Freddie, interjects. They aren't registered. Rico, oh, original works. Well, what we can do is to look at everything that is and choose the best and register the copyright and include it in an edition I can produce in the United States if you are interested. Call from the ocean engine. Fine string instrument.